Hey there YouTube, this is CFL Fanatic. I am once again back giving you my picks for week 19 in the 2011 CFL season and it is shaping up to be a good one. We got five of the six teams in the playoffs right now are all sitting at 10 and 7. There's a two-way tie for first place in the CFL East between Montreal and Winnipeg and a three-way tie for first place in the West between Calgary, BC, and Edmonton. All those three teams can finish in any one of those three spots too. So last week, uh, needless to say I did brutal only got the BC game right everything else was wrong same with Schultze that takes my total on the season to 38 and 30 Schultze's 39 and 29 so I'm still one game behind him uh, I didn't go against him at all this week or last week however this week I will say that's going to change all right so we'll get to the picks but before I do and I know I put up a 12 minute video last week so I'll try and keep this short but um, as you know from that video, I have a lot to say about this hit. Um, so uh, this week, uh, Johnny Sears was suspended for one game um, after the brutal uh, and late and deliberate, deliberate, that is the key word, hit on Stephen Giles uh, right in his head that uh, knocked him unconscious and caused uh, some great injury, it caused him not to be able to start the game uh, against Hamilton. Um, so... Yeah, uh, I have said this before, I'll say it again, one game does not go far enough, um, he should be suspended for the rest of the season. I say three games minimum, so if Winnipeg were to finish second and have to play three games in the playoffs, then he can come back if they get to the Grey Cup. Fine. Three game minimum suspension, I don't care where you are, bye weeks do not count, Three games, regardless of whether or not the playoffs are coming up, which, you know, I like to think might have been the reason why he only got the one game. Now, what's bugging me is that people are starting to say, well, if you're going to suspend Johnny Sears for the hit on Giles, why don't you suspend, why didn't you suspend Kowali for the hit on Buck Pierce? And anybody who says that, that, that um, those two hits are of the same severity is smoking something. Because if you watch the tape, um, it is not really a headshot that Quali delivers to Buck Pierce. Now, I want to be very clear. I'm not defending the hit that Quali made. It was a dirty hit. But if you look carefully, Quali is leading with his shoulder. And when you lead with your shoulder, throw your entire body weight into a quarterback who's standing there defenseless um, at full speed, that's how you injure somebody. That is how you seriously injure someone, and you should be ejected from the game. However, when you hit a quarterback with your helmet, use your helmet as a weapon to hit him in the head as he's sliding down in his most vulnerable spot and snap his neck back, that's not just how you injure someone, that's how you kill someone. That is why this deserves more than a one-game suspension, and it's as simple as that. All right, so on to week 19. Uh, if anybody can tell me why the schedule changed around and why I missed the Toronto Hamilton game, didn't even know it was happening, I would love to hear an explanation because I thought it was going to be tonight and now I'm finding all of these games are shifted around. So if anyone wants to explain what happened, or maybe I'm just crazy, that's always a possibility, um, it would be great if you could get back to me. Anyways, Saskatchewan and Edmonton, Saskatchewan is done, uh, they're out of the playoff picture, this game means nothing to them. Uh, Edmonton, on the other hand, very much, this game is incredibly important for them. Uh, it's their chance to clinch first place in the CFL West. Um, if they win and BC loses, then Edmonton will clinch first place in the CFL West. If they win, they can get at least second, regardless of what happens with the other teams. So Saskatchewan, you know, they're looking um, to, to get back. They're coming off of a win against Hamilton, but that was a game Hamilton didn't play well. Saskatchewan really didn't play that well either. Um, and I'm sensing a green for the win column, but unfortunately I think it's going to be accompanied with a little bit of gold, and I have to go with Edmonton in this one. All right, Winnipeg and Calgary. So, Winnipeg coming off of a big loss and a very difficult loss against the Argos, uh, and it was problematic for them. Um, that was their chance to clinch first place in the CFL East and make this week a week where they can, you know, like mix up their lineup, maybe start some uh, backups a little bit. Basically just a week to kind of uh, revitalize themselves and not have to worry about fighting for the standings. Instead, the health of Buck Pierce is in question. Will Alex Brink start or will Pierce start? That's a big 
uh, concern too. On the other side, the Calgary Stampeders are coming off of a big win against Montreal. So, if you go by the history, uh, it says Calgary, Calgary might pull off this win. However, Winnipeg has faced a lot of adversity this season. Winnipeg has faced a lot of difficult situations. And on all of those occasions, Winnipeg has come out on top and really uh, showed that they deserve to be in the playoffs, that they deserve to be a Grey Cup contender. So I think I'm going to have to disagree with Schultz, and I think I'm going to have to take the Winnipeg Blue Bombers to win this one and get first place in the East. And the final game, Montreal taking on BC. This is a big one for the standings too. The Alouettes, after the Bomber loss, had a chance to go up by one game, and although it wouldn't have clinched, technically clinched first place in the East, it certainly would have made their job a whole lot easier. But now they have to hope Winnipeg loses, and they have to win. So Winnipeg now once again has the advantage. They squandered a big opportunity. And maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm still thinking back to that Alouette team that went 15-3 and in 2009. But the Alouettes do not look like, you know exceptional. They look like a good team. They do not look like the exceptional Montreal Alouettes that people are used to seeing. And I don't think this bodes well for the playoffs. I think I think they might run into troubles down the road. Uh, on the flip side, BC, um, once again, uh, continuing to do very, very strongly. Hard to believe at one point they were 1-6. and six. Now they're 10-7. and seven. They've won 9 of their last 10. Uh, I think I'm going to have to take BC at home. Uh, against the Alouettes in this one. So those are my picks in case you missed them. And once again, please, somebody tell me what happened to the schedule because I was sure the Hamilton-Toronto game was going to be on Friday night and now I find all the games are being pushed uh, ahead a day. So please let me know and I will see the rest of you next week in the playoffs.